So um, like those metabolic products, you have mentioned like lactate. They're just so common in daily life. Even like anaerobic exercise. If we do anaerobic exercise, lactate will accumulate during this process. So is there any condition of that? Does the accumulation of lactate af after anaerobic exercise like harm our body or like, cause inflammation? Yeah, this is a question I get asked quite a lot. So I, I go back to the distinction between uh, acute and chronic response. So in, in exercise, there is, of course, an accumulation of lactic acid that leads to uh, the usual response that we know of our muscles. But this is an acute accumulation of lactate, which is resolved within, within normally 48 to 72 hours. And so we return to an homeostatic uh, muscle response. Uh, however, in cancer and autoimmunity and other chronic conditions, there is a chronic accumulation of lactate. So if you go and measure lactate in the tumor microenvironment, so you will find a concentration of between 20 and 40 millimolar uh, of lactate, which corresponds, which might correspond to a pH of about six, between six and seven in, in, uh, in the arthritic joint. Uh, if you measure lactate, we have measured that directly, but others had, had done that in the 70s even, you will find a concentration of lactate between, with, between 10 and 15 millimolar, which corresponds to generally to a pH uh, of around 6.9 to 7. So this is a low pH compared to the neutral pH that you find generally in tissues. Um, Considering that the normal levels of lactate in the blood of a healthy person are below two millimolar, are between one and two millimolar, you can see that this is an accumulation of 10 to 40 times, depending whether we are in an autoimmune environment or in the cancer environment. And this is chronic. And so what we have to study is the response of immune cells to this chronic accumulation of lactate in the microenvironment. And what we've shown as a first response is that immune cells that enter the inflammatory site or the tumor microenvironment as a response to lactate remain entrapped in the inflammatory site. We have explained that by showing that exposure to high levels of lactate causes an influx of lactate in the immune cells. This causes an inhibition of glycolysis, which is required for the movement of immune cells. So this inhibition of glycolysis is a response to a, an, an exposure of high levels of lactate causes the entrapment of the immune cells in the inflammatory side. So we have proposed this that if you block the lactate signaling or the lactate sensing, you can uh, achieve a, a, a reactivation of the migratory ability of the immune cells, which will be able now to egress from the inflamed side, which will result in a reduction of immune inflammatory immune cells in the microenvironment. The second, we have also shown that in response to lactate, there is an increase in certain inflammatory cytokines, such as IL-17, but also interferon gamma, we have shown and others, uh, um, which are um, of the subject of current studies in our lab. And, uh, and, and so by blocking lactate signaling or sensing, you can reduce the uh, production of these inflammatory cytokines and in the, in the autoimmune microenvironment. And this is again advantageous for the resolution of the disease. We recently also shown that if you block this lactate sensing or signal, you promote immune suppressive responses. Now, the, the key thing is that, and we have discussed that in a review that was published in Nature, Nature Reviews Immunology in 2020, is that this response to lactate could be a tissue specific. And so we and others have shown that in inflammatory sites, you lactate promotes inflammation by the mechanisms I've just shown you. But a lot of literature has shown that in the tumor microenvironment, lactate promotes immune suppression, and then again becomes a mechanism that promotes tumor growth, right? So in both diseases, contexts, tumor or autoimmune diseases, 
the presence of lactate is bad for the disease and you want to either block the production of lactate, block the signaling of lactate, or block the sensing of lactate in both cases. But the, re the, the, the thing that we need to understand is that in both this happens in both disease contexts, but for opposite immune responses that are achieved. And how this is achieved in the different tissue issues that we look at is not clear at the moment. Uh, and, and I believe people will try to understand that in the near future. Yeah, definitely. So uh, in your paper, I've noticed that you have been working on the lactate transporter inhibitor. Is it a very promising uh, way to block lactate? And is there any clinical trials that have showed yeah. um, trials? I think that, 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 that's, again, a very good question. So. So far, there have been only trials for uh, uh, MCT1, which is also known as SLC16A1. So this is a constitutive lactic acid transporter. Yeah. And uh, this has been targeted uh, with the use of a small molecule in mel melanoma. Now, the trial returned beneficial effects to the disease, but a lot of toxic effect to the patients. So the trial was not approved by FDA. And this is the common thing. You need, we need to, to identify more selective molecules that act only in certain contexts. So in our case, but in the case of other uh, investigators uh, I'm aware, uh, I know, we have focused on a lactate transporter that is only expressed by certain immune cells and in certain tissues. And we believe that would give the beneficial effects without taking away, with, without causing much trouble to the, to the patients. I mean, this is a general, I think, uh, 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 routes that the science field is taking you know like we have blocked so far systemic major uh signaling molecules such as tnf and interleukin one but the field is moving to much more specific molecules such as targeting pd1 or targeting ctla4 with these are checkpoints that are only expressed in certain contexts in certain tissues at a certain time point of the disease, right? And that's, I think, where the field is moving, trying to identify more selective and specific targets that will give you a beneficial effect without having massive uh, toxic or side effects for the patient. So that's the direction we have taken with the lactic transporter we've chosen. And uh, I believe that uh, we are developing that well. It will take time, but we have interest from a number. We've had interest from a number of pharma so far, and hopefully, we'll be signing a, a, a major uh, collaboration in the in the near future to develop this uh, this drug.